Hello, my name is Jin Tingye, and I'm a medical student in National Yangming University in Taiwan. Today in this video summary, I'll present our paper entitled Modulation of CFTR Gating by Permian Ions, published in Journal of General Physiology, January 2015. Cystic fibrosis, or CF, is the most common life-shortening genetic disease afflicting people of Caucasian origins. Multiple epithelial lining organ systems, such as pancreas, the GI tract, the lung, and the liver, are affected in CF due to the dysfunction of a chloride ion channel encoded by the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator, or CFTR gene. CFTR is a member of the ABC transporter superfamily. Almost all the members in this family function as active transporters that utilize ATP hydrolysis as the free energy to transport substrate across the plasma membrane against an electrochemical gradient. But CFTR is a bona fide ion channel enacting passive transport for chloride ions. However, like other members in this family, CFTR possesses two transmembrane domains, or TMDs, that craft a gated pore, and two nucleotide binding domains, or NBDs, which harness the free energy of ATP binding and hydrolysis to fuel conformational changes intimated linked to opening and closing of the ion conducting pore. Unique to CFTR is this regulatory, or R domain, that contains multiple consensus sites for protein kinase A dependent phosphorylation. For CFTR to act as an ATP gated ion channel, phosphorylation of the R domain is a prerequisite. To attain a comprehensive understanding of gating of phosphorylated CFTR is important, not only because this effort may grant us a glimpse of the evolutionary relationship between ion channels and active transporters, but also because a large number of disease-associated mutations, including the most common one resulting in gating defects. Here I will use this animation to demonstrate a simplified version of our current understanding of CFTR gating. Each MBD has one ATP binding site. However, our previous studies have demonstrated that ATP binding at site 1 is exceedingly stable. Therefore, it's the binding of ATP on site 2 that initiates the dimerization of NBDs and subsequently facilitates gate opening. Site 2 is also where ATP hydrolysis takes place. Before ATP binds to site 2, the NBDs are not fully dimerized. The gate in CFTR's TMDs opens at an extremely slow rate. ATP binding to site 2 dimerizes the NBDs and thereby drastically increase the rate of gate opening. Since the open channel conformation with the dimerized NBD is energetically stable, closing of the gate without ATP hydrolysis occurs extremely slowly. ATP hydrolysis at the catalysis competent site or site 2 causes partial separation of two NBDs, which speeds up gate closure. The whole gating process can be summarized with this model proposed lately by our group. The upper row depicts three closed states with an empty site 2, an ATP bind site 2, or dimerized NBDs. The lower three states are corresponding open channel conformations. Unlike traditional ligand gated channel, for CFDR, it is not ATP binding but NBD dimerization that is energetically coupled to gate opening in TMDs. For wild-type CFTR, because of the input of the free energy from ATP hydrolysis, the overall gating process is driven away from equilibrium. A recent report from our group shows that VX770, or eva Kefter, a drug now used in clinics to treat CF patients carrying certain pathogenic mutations, increases the activity of CFTR by shifting these vertical transitions toward open conformations. Before I show you our results, let me briefly introduce the method used in our study. We expressed CFTR in Chinese hamster ovary cells and then employed the patch clamp technique to record CFTR channel currents in excised inside-out patches in real time. First, 
The DNA was introduced into the cells to express CFTR channels in the membrane. Then we used a thin glass pipette to patch the membrane. When the membrane and the glass form a tight seal, we can excise the patch away from the cell. The intracellular side of the membrane will be on the outside of the pipette, so that reagent can be directly applied to the cytoplasmic side of the channel. After a channel is activated by the reagent we applied, single channel current can be monitored in real time. In cases when the membrane patch contains many CFTR channels, instead of microscopic single channel events, we could record microscopic CFTR current as seen. As a chloride channel, CFTR is also permeable to a host of small anions such as nitrate, bromide, and bicarbonate. While characterizing the permeation properties of CFTR's ion conducting pore, we found surprisingly that the activity of CFTR differs among several of these anions. Shown here are two representative single-channel recordings of wild-type CFTR with either chloride or nitrate as charge carriers. We can clearly see that compared to the control, when the cytoplasmic side of the channel is bathed in a nitrate-containing solution, the channel spends much longer time in the open state, resulting in an increase of the open probability. To probe the binding side of nitrate, we first conducted an experiment with nitrate in the pipette solution, which is the extracellular side of channel, and found that nitrate has little effect on gating when intracellular anion is chloride. But after we replaced intracellular anion with nitrate, we could see a clear increase of open probability. Since replacing external chloride with nitrate does not replicate the gating effect of internal nitrate, the binding site of nitrate is likely located on the cytoplasmic side of CFTR. We then conducted a series of experiments to pin down the possible action site of nitrate. We first examined the effect of nitrate on a CFTR construct whose R domain was deleted, named delta R. The single channel kinetics shows that the increase of open probability by nitrate is remarkably similar to what we obtained from wild type CFTR. This result not only indicates that the gating effect of nitrate is independent of phosphorylation of the R domain, it also excludes the R domain as the target of nitrate. As described earlier, it is known that CFTR gating is tightly controlled by ADP induced dimerization of NBDs as well as ATP hydrolysis triggers separation of the NBD dimer. It is therefore possible that nitrate affects gating by interacting with NBDs. We first consider the involvement of ATP hydrolysis in nitrate's gating effects by testing nitrate in three different conditions, where ATP hydrolysis is abolished. All three sets of experiments demonstrate that the gating effects of nitrate are independent of ATP hydrolysis. Here we just show one set of our experimental results. It has been shown previously that mutating the conserved aspartate residue at position 1370 abolishes ATP hydrolysis. However, as seen in this slide, nitrate bears nearly identical effects on the gating parameters of d 1317 CFTR. So far, we have excluded the role of phosphorylation and ATP hydrolysis in the gating effects of nitrate. But what is most surprising comes from the next set of experiments that shows the effects of nitrate occurs even when NBD dimerization is disabled. Our previous study has shown that converting the conserved glycine at position 551 to aspartate causes gating defect because the mutation introduced a negatively charged side chain at a critical position so that NBD dimerization is prevented due to an electrostatic repulsion between the side chain of aspartate and the negatively charged gamma phosphate in ATP. Here are two expanded traces of the G5RND CFTR current, one in chloride and the other taken right after switching to nitrate. The large enhancement of activity by nitrate suggests NBD dimerization is not required for gating modulation by nitrate. This conclusion is further supported by an experiment on delta NBD2 CFTR, a construct with the whole NBD2 deleted. 
In these recordings, the level of activity increases immediately upon solution changes from one with chloride to one with nitrate. This result thus indicates that nitrate increases the activity of CFTR even when we take ATP or ADP-induced NBD dimerization out of the picture. For now, we've demonstrated that nitrate skating effects on CFTR is independent of phosphorylation of the R domain, ATP hydrolysis, or dimerization of the NBDs. These features of skating modulation by nitrate are strikingly similar to those of VX770, a universal CFTR potentiator now used for the treatment of patients with CF, which acts as the interface between CFTR's TMDs and lipid bilayers. Similar to nitrate, VX770 boosts the open probability of what have CFTR with normal gating machineries, as well as a swath of CFTR mutants including g 5 d and delta NBD2, which exhibit various gating defects. So we hypothesize that VX770 and nitrate potentiate CFTR through a common kinetic mechanism. However, with the distinct physical chemical properties, nitrate and VX770 are unlikely to affect CFTR gating via the same binding site. Previous studies have suggested that the binding site of the hydrophobic VX770 is located at the interface between CFTR's TMDs and the lipid bilayer. In contrast, nitrate as a hydrophilic anion should prefer an aqueous environment. We therefore hypothesize that VX770 and nitrate affect the same gating transitions, but work through different binding sites, one at the lipid channel interface for VX770 and one at the water channel interface for nitrate. This hypothesis will be supported if we can demonstrate that VX770 and nitrate increase the open probability in an independent manner. To test our idea, Delta NBD2 CFTR was chosen for two reasons. First, the removal of ATP binding and NBD dimerization from the gating scheme simplifies our data interpretation. Especially once ATP hydrolysis is taken out of the equation, CFTR gating can be treated as conformational transitions in equilibrium. Second, the extremely low open probability of this mutant CFTR provides a much wider room for the manipulation of PO. Shown here is the macroscopic current of delta NBD2 CFTR in either chloride or nitrate and treated either with or without VX770 as labeled. It turns out that the full increase of PO by nitrate is nearly the same whether VX770 is present or not. By the same token, the presence of nitrate does not affect the full increase of PO by VX770. This result indeed supports the notion that nitrate and VX770 work independently on CFTR skating. Furthermore, the full increase of PO by a combination of VX770 and nitrate is the product of each individual effect. This interesting mathematical relationship actually bears an energetic implication. Let us go through some math to understand the energetic mechanism that accounts for this result. For delta NBD2, the whole gating scheme of CFTR can be simplified to two states in equilibrium. The fact that delta NBD2 assumes a very low PO allows us to simplify the relationship between the PO and the transition rates. The theory of reaction rate dictates that the relation between PO and free energy change is exponential. Now we turn back to our experimental result. The data show that the PO change caused by applying nitrate and VX together is the product of applying it separately. From the energetic perspective, the free energy change of applying nitrate and VX together is the sum of the free energy change induced by individual reagent. We conclude that nitrate as a permanent ion potentiates CFTR gating through a mechanism that is energetically additive to that of VX770. Although we do not know exactly where nitrate binds, one possible side of action is the actual ion permeation pathway. Thank you very much.